Hello, Vera. Hello. Fine, you can switch on your camera and then perfect. Amazing. Hello. Great to meet Hello. you. Hello. Yeah. Thank you for having me. Sure. I'm so excited. Sure. So cool that you're here. It's amazing. So how are you doing today? Good. Uh, I just packed um, my work. I'm going to Berlin to do a show. I'll tell mm -hmm. a little bit about it. There's some processing involved, which mm -hmm. is kind of always the case, I guess. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, and uh, I'm just out of holidays. So this is like my first kind of real work or like real uh, moment that I'm like back at my office. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, really nice, really good way to start the year. And awesome. you? I'm totally fine. Super excited about the event. So that was really, uh, yeah, I've been planning a lot and just trying to get everything together. And I was a little bit, you know, to be honest, a little bit excited about the technical stuff. So, but I'm super happy that it, that it works. And yeah, it's, it's great. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's also kind of standard that something breaks down. Like if you, for me, it's always like if you just... If I just accept that one thing is gonna go wrong, then it mm -hmm. doesn't matter that much anymore. But if that's nothing true. is going, that's like that's even better, of course. Yeah, that's that's true. So tell yeah. us a bit about the show. What kind of show is it? I saw something like knitting art on Instagram. Is that what you do there? What you accept? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So um, it's together with Charlotte Rodo. So we're mm -hmm. both doing work, and we're also uh, making work together. Um, and um, so I n I hacked a knitting machine. There's a, actually it was really simple because there's a whole community online that made like shields that you can order and solder yourself for Arduino. Uh, and basically, you have these kind of commercial knitting machines from between the 50s and the 80s. Um, mm -hmm. And then the bottleneck was so all the things were quite advanced, but the bottleneck was the memory. So. Uh, if you hack it, you can actually kind of use it as a printer uh, mm -hmm. because it has then a limited memory. And yeah, I made three works, like three big work, works and some smaller ones that have to do with um, women in code in that time between the 50s and the 80s. Mm -hmm. uh, because mm -hmm. actually, and I think you probably know this, um, it was really kind of a, a field where it was yeah women were quite prominent in that time and somewhere from the 80s that shifted and it's never really been proven why or how but uh at that time it was like considered soft work kind of like um administration you know like typing mm -hmm. uh so yeah there's just three pieces that are yeah they're kind of um taking fragments from stuff that i read about it uh, but they're also just nice wall tapestries and it, it was like really nice to make something physical again so yeah mm -hmm. if you're if you're there uh please please come by we're also gonna make a website so you you will be able to see it online of course like it's still a kind of a strange time so we want to mm -hmm. make sure that it's yeah accessible for everyone. that's amazing what is the title of the exhibition it's something with software right yeah uh, a visual guide to software which is nice. a super stupid pun, but I, I love that. Uh, That's and, so cool. Yeah. And Charlotte is exhibiting some, I, I mean, she's a very to typography, right? So mm -hmm. she creates typefaces and uh, what does yeah. she exhibit? Yeah, so both of us actually uh, worked on a variable typeface and there you mm -hmm. can also see them as type specimens. Mm -hmm. um, and so she made pieces uh, of aluminium uh, with basically like a modular a modular um, system where you can there's like building blocks that you can make type of and you can re reframe them and then they make new letters or characters mm -hmm. so that's that's what she has been working on um yeah and uh it, yeah her work has a lot to do in general with feminism uh but it has a completely different angle because of course she hasn't been knitting um, mm -hmm. but we also made some pieces together so it's like yeah, there's going to be a lot and we, we're, we're having one week to set it up. It's in a new project space. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's it's quite exciting because we made some floor plans. But of course, in real life, it's always going to turn out differently. And Amazing. Yeah. Sounds very exciting. Super cool. Yeah. I don't know if I will have the chance to come to Berlin because Berlin is still very far away. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah. From Bielefeld. I live close to Bielefeld. Yeah. yeah. Have you been there? Yeah. Have you been in Bielefeld? No. I haven't been there, but I know you uh, You are close to there, so. 
Yeah, That's, exactly, exactly. Yeah. yeah, but maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll go to visit Martin, who I will work together in the next uh, semester. So oh, yeah. we'll see. <laughs> yeah, we're going we're gonna to be working together. That's true. Very yeah. excited about that. Super cool. Yeah. Awesome. And by the way, programmers, female programmers, I love this photo by um, of Margaret Hamilton, the NASA yeah, um, scientist. Yeah, the one with the books. Of, yeah, with the yeah. whole code of the of the Apollo mission, <laughs> which is so yeah. cool. Yeah. I mean, that, that whole Apollo project is, uh, for many reasons, super historical, but like definitely the, the, co the like the, how old the machines were and how, how much they managed to do with it is, yeah really cool mm -hmm. yeah all right so if you're ready i can uh, disappear and you can do your talk if you want i'm ready yes that's great um right. so i'll share my screen yeah sure. um, you can do so i'll do that just to make sure so i need to optimize for a video clip and i'll share my sound so i'll double check if this works Mm -hmm. um, you see an empty screen and now you see design plus code. Oh, sorry. I think we see your um, UI for navigating through the presentation. Ah, okay, yes. Oh, sorry. So I guess you, no worries. I guess you have to um, share the other screen or something. Yes, I do have to do that. You see something went wrong, but it wasn't that bad. Yes. Now you okay. see. Okay, that looks right. Okay, I'm going that to looks disappear good. and I'm back when you're finished, okay? Okay, you thank you, Tim. <laughs> thank you. Um, okay, so um, my name is Vera van der Seip. Uh, I'm going to tell you something about design and code, basically, yeah, how I work with processing in my practice, but also why I love it so much and why uh, it really made my practice and my life the way it is. Um, so when processing was released, this is what I looked like. I was seven years old. Uh, I clearly did not own a computer yet um, or a front teeth, um, but I was already quite into that. I, was, I really liked uh, working on my parents' computer and uh, I was already really interested in exploring how stuff around me worked. Uh, and at that age, I was really, I really liked a white tiger. So I found this site called Wikipedia through my dad. Uh, I'm, I think you might have heard uh, of it, but in that time it was like quite new. Um, and I, yeah, I looked up all these things and I, I was so proud of myself when I found out like that if you press the shift and you press the letter, then it gives you the all caps or like a, a, a capital. Um, yeah, so that was um, where my interest started, but where I didn't know anything about programming or processing yet. Um, and this is me, well, actually a few years ago, but kind of now. Um, so yeah, basically uh, I'm 27 now and I have my own design practice. Um, here you see a 3D scan of my studio, which is in Amsterdam. Um, and yeah, I basically do graphic design, but also programming. And actually a lot of programming is involved in most of the projects I do. Um, I share the space uh, with, uh, a, yeah, basically a collective called Sesbands. Um, here you see some of the work of one of my uh, yeah, colleagues called Mark. Um, yeah, it's, it's been really great being here uh, in the space. You also see it behind me um, during the, uh, the pandemic. But yeah, uh, if I would have to summarize what I do, it's basically making weird type move. I think that summarizes it quite well, although yeah, there's many different techniques, but also I do that because I really like exploring things and things can be anything. Um, but this is why I love processing so much and why from the moment that I discovered it, uh, I was so blown away by it because it really helped me to understand how the world around me kind of works. So um, yeah, I did a lot of different experiments with processing. So. For instance, how uh, forces work. There's like this amazing book that I'm sure you know, uh, The Nature of Code. So I looked into how physics worked and I hated physics in high school, but um, being able to understand it and to visualize it made it so much more engaging and so much more fun for me. Um, but also for instance, other processes. So how a fungi grows uh, or how you can yeah, simulate that. Um, 
or even just like anything that had to do with uh, organic motion or yeah, basically noise um, and how yeah things like clouds and uh, water, uh, how that moves and what logic is in there. Um, and yeah, uh, as long, yeah, basically along the lines, I got more and more advanced, um, but I really didn't have any basics. So um, I'm also really interested in pseudo randomness. So this is like any computer random. Uh, it can never be a real random because a computer doesn't do random stuff normally. It just does whatever it's told. So uh, yeah, if you get a, a random number from a computer, it's basically pseudo random. Um, yeah, and you can do a lot of really cool stuff with that still. Um, but also more graphical things. So I have a graphical training I studied at the, the Royal Academy of Arts in The Hague. Um, so I was also really interested in the visual things that, um, that this program brought me. So for instance, working with fractals um, or, you know, uh, designers really like grids in general, I also do. So like, how can you make a different grid that's actually qu quite hard to make with by hand, but if you program it, it's uh, really easy to do it. Um, so for instance, here, there's this grid where basically every row, there's two uh, cells less. So the information space becomes less and less and the type becomes less and less legible. Um, but also, yeah, basically how you can work within these grids so how you can read images um, and make animations with that or how you can uh, trace along a path. So basically um, animate a line or animate something uh, uh, that, does, that you cannot do that easily with other uh, programs. Oh, the next, uh, sorry, I already put it on the slide. So the next one is a bit flashy. So if you uh, have issues with that, just close your eyes for 10 seconds. Okay, I'm going to the next slide. Uh, yeah, so also, uh, for instance, how color theory works. Okay, it's safe again. Um, no more flashes. Uh, or how superposition works, so how you actually, yeah, how the eye perceives colors if you have actually not one color, but uh, a combination of colors that makes it look like a different color. Um, and also, yeah, how to work collaboratively. So for instance, um, how to make an exquisite corpse or an exquisite typeface. So basically if you work together with a group how can you um, yeah, make, a, uh, make a letter together from different parts? Um, yeah, so basically uh, exploring the world around me and uh, I really enjoy having processing for that because it made, makes it so doable and so fun and uh, yeah, really good. Um, so I'll talk about uh, three projects that I've been doing quite recently um, that I, in which I have used processing for some part, um, uh, just to show you like how it works in a, in a project. Um, so one of them is called Space of Urgency. Um, it's an identity for a collective called Space of Urgency, uh, which is basically yeah, an organization, um, non non-profit organization that fights for uh, alternative housing, so for instance squats, but also um, like free spaces for minorities that are not accepted in certain countries. Uh, basically safe spaces for people that um, yeah, uh, are maybe not accepted because of their beliefs or because of their uh, sexuality or their identity or their gender. Um, which is, I think, a super, super important uh, thing. And um, yeah, they have to work quite quickly because they organize protests and they organize like, meetings. Uh, so I try to basically make tools for them as much as possible so that if they would need any poster or any animation, they could uh, easily make it or make it with my help. Um, so uh, there was like, for instance, this one tool that I made for them where um, I, I would help them with that because they were a bit scared of processing, but uh, where I could just enter some text and it would make an animation. And it was all based on this uh, system where you basically have uh, these lines that become um, lighter and darker and bigger and smaller to basically yeah, have this, um, to have this like text that is behind it, um, but basically one system. Um, so for instance, well, this was just a test, but uh, we could also do kind of these stickers with it. Um, 
so that they could make banners or they could uh, project uh, stuff somewhere. Um, and actually, so this one, this part was processing for all the animations just because then I could save it for them and uh, it was a lot uh, quicker that way. Uh, but I also made a tool for them for Instagram. Uh, so, uh, oh yeah, you can actually see the handle, which is, well, it doesn't matter. Um, uh, yeah, basically for them to make stuff for Instagram or for uh, print. So you could also make print out of it. Uh, we made this uh, tool for um, for them to make posters. So uh, with like uh, two different type sizes that they could select. Uh, and then they could print it really cheaply. Uh, so black ink on like um, neon colored paper, which is a very cheap and quick uh, printing technique. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, processing was really great for this just because um, making these tools makes it a lot easier to have like these returning projects where you, you want to keep on helping people, um, but you don't, yeah, you don't have to like go completely into the project again. You just have to change some text and uh, run the program. Um, they also have a website. This is not, not built with processing, although there's some P5 in there uh, where they yeah, collect all the, the active and inactive spaces that they represent or they work with. Um, yeah, and it was really nice to see actually in, in June, early June, there was uh, the first protests in Berlin. I couldn't be there, but maybe some of you were there, I really hope. Um, yeah, that was, uh, it's still an ongoing project, but um, yeah, one, one of them. Uh, another one uh, that I also finished recently, and actually Patrick also collaborated, or like also worked with this, is for Vans uh, with imp uh, Imprint Projects, uh, where we basically made audio reactive uh, animations. And uh, Lasse Klarsgaard, uh, who is a developer and also creative coder, he basically tied everything together. Um, I can't show you everything of the event, but there are some fragments that I can. Uh, so basically, I made this uh, kind of slider um, that uh, would respond to sound and it would make these kind of abstract animations. Uh, and yeah, it, it would respond to sound, but there would also be some sort of randomness in it. So sometimes it would just uh, change um, size or change speed just to have kind of an automatic uh, flow happening. Uh, that's very abstract. Um, this was, is from uh, Imprint Projects, so something they put on Instagram. Um, yeah, it was super nice actually to see this. This was one of the more corporate projects for me recently. So it was really cool to see. I did all of this with uh, B5.js, also with the help of Lassa. And uh, to be able to do that um, with the tool that I work with, like B5 and processing, I worked so much with it. It was really great because uh, it made it a lot more fun for me because I already had, uh, yeah, some ideas of how to how to do this. Uh, this is uh, from one of the events uh, they put it on YouTube. So you see like some of the setups uh, where they showed the visuals, which, yeah, it looks really really cool. Uh, but yeah, uh, that was done with P5.js. Um, of course, that's not processing, but uh, I still wanted to show it because. Um, yeah, it's, it was a, a good project for me, I think. Um, and this is the project I just talked about with Tim. So this is something that's happening uh, next week. The opening is on Saturday, so you're very welcome to join. Um, it's an exhibition called uh, Visual Guide to Software Wear. And I work together with Charlotte Rode, who is uh, also a graphic designer and a type designer. Um, and basically how this project started was um, in the last winter, so uh, like six, seven, no wait, already eight months ago, I bought uh, a knitting machine because I was really kind of craving doing something physical again. Most of the work that I make is digital. I almost, well, I very rarely work with print, but uh, I very almost never make objects. Um, and I used to do that, so I, I kind of yeah felt that urge again, especially with so many online meetings and um, being online so much. So uh, I uh, used, so I, I bought basically a knitting machine that's electronic. It's the Brother KH910. Uh, and there's this amazing community called IAF, All Yarns Are Beautiful, uh, where they designed a shield 
so that basically you can use these machines to, um, yeah, how do you say that? Basically have use them as a printer. You can have like an infinite, uh, infinite image. Uh, you can print it uh, as long as you want. The restriction is that you have 200 needles in the, in the width. Uh, and so you can print on forever. Um, so I made three works of them. I have, I don't have um, good photographs of them yet because I just finished them. I just packed them like uh, an hour earlier. Uh, but one of, yeah, so I use processing for, um, uh, for two of these. Actually, this one is just with JavaScript, uh, some P5 uh, for the, basically for the, um, the rendering. Uh, so they're all, they're basically uh, three works um, about uh, women uh, in programming in software uh, environments in that time that these knitting machines existed. So that's between the 50s and the 80s of the last century. Um, yeah, and they're kind of fragments of, um, of things that were written about this, but also of interviews and books of that time. Um, and yeah, you can see kind of a preview of them already. Um, this one is a little bit more abstract. Uh, and here I actually use processing to uh, make a more abstract pattern uh, out of a font that I created. Um, and this one is even more abstract. And yeah, it's gonna look really good, I think. But uh, for now, this is all I can show you. So please come by or visit the website uh, when it's ready. It will be on my Instagram and on my website. Um, yeah, and this is the studio downstairs last night. Um, yeah, it was really fun actually working with processing again and then making something physical out of that. There was uh, something I used to do in art school, but that's already more than five years ago. So um, yeah, it was really nice to see one of these images uh, from these processing sketches uh, into, yeah, into a physical object again. Um, so yeah, I said it earlier as well, but you're very welcome to join. Um, please do. Um, so those were three projects. Um, I'm almost uh, done presenting, but I just wanted to talk a little bit about, um, yeah, we've had 20 years of processing now and what I think would be nice for the next 20 years. Um, although I think processing and the foundation, they're like, they're doing so well with this. And this is something else I really appreciate. Um, one thing that uh, has been for me for the past two years, uh, very valuable is teaching uh, and mostly teaching code to uh, yeah groups of people that were, would normally not be so interested in it. So either designers or like teenagers, um, people from different backgrounds where they maybe yeah, they maybe are not really encountering that normally. Um, so yeah, I teach, but also um, I also teach workshops and I also teach regularly. And um, I just wanted to show, yeah, I always make kind of a one image for the workshop when I write it, uh, but I also wanted to show some work of students from the past. Well, one of them is from a year and a half ago. So when I started teaching and the rest is from the past half year, because I, I think it's just, really cool to see um, and I just want to yeah share it with you um, so one of the first things that I was teaching was uh, coding in Artes at the yeah the it's an art school in amongst other places in Arnhem uh, and we made um, yeah we made these animations all with p5 um, and basically they had to work with contradictions and they were shown at the demo festival, which was organized uh, by Studio Dunbar, who, yeah, uh, Sunder, who's going to present later, also uh, works uh, works at. Um, yeah, and it was just really cool to see. I just started teaching, but it was, um, they basically exhibited um, these videos for 24 hours at the central station in Amsterdam. Uh, and it was a really, really, uh, yeah, really nice to see. Um, something more recent. So I recently gave a type in motion course at Artes. Uh, this is the work uh, of Kate Konovalova, um, which I thought was quite nice. Uh, and this is the work of Katja Rempel and Nao Gareth. 
um, who basically, um, yeah, they were um, kind of helping each other out um, and looking at how they could make different ink traps, which turned out to be quite difficult uh, with P5GS, but I think they made like a really, really interesting research in that. Um, this was the work from the same workshop from Rodrigo Junquera, um, uh, who was basically making uh, yeah, a program where he could select a part of an image and then make like a pattern out of it. So like a typographic uh, pattern system, which I thought was also very, very interesting and very well thought through. Um, so this was a sketch of Marina de Guzman Rafikawar at the LCC in London, who uh, was working on uh, yeah, making typography in brief, which is like quite a simple thing, but she, yeah, she thought it through really well and uh, it looked really nice. Uh, this was a more recent one uh, from Studio 404 at Next Museum. You'll hear some music in the background. So this is from Sonna Eichold and she makes her own music and she didn't have any experience in, in like two courses. She managed to make, make this whole animation, uh, which was about chaos, basically. I'll let it play for a bit. So our work was about chaos and about basically uh, the mythology of the earth. Uh, yeah. And I think what I, I just wanted to show a few of these things because um, I really enjoy seeing kind of the, the effect that processing has. Uh, and also I think that's one of the most valuable things of it that it makes it so accessible to learn uh, coding uh, and to yeah, work with this in an engaging way and to uh, get started with this. And I, I hope that this will continue for the next 20 years. And um, I'm definitely going to continue with that uh, as well. Um, I also want to say, well, this is not for the next 20 years, but for in a few months, I'm going to organize a creative coding festival, which will hopefully be a part offline, but definitely also online. Uh, it will be the 27th and the 28th of November. So save the date. Um, yeah, and I just wanted to say I really love processing. I could only find gifts of Daniel, but I also, I know Casey's going to be here. I want to thank him and Ben and Lauren and also Daniel and everyone else at the foundation for this amazing tool and uh, maintaining it. And I saw you guys have a new website. So uh, if you haven't been to processing yet, I opened it this morning and I was shocked it looks so good um and yeah that was all i had to say so thank you um you can see more of my work at here from the site which is my name uh, on instagram uh, i'm also working on a new website uh, which will be like basically launched around the time of this festival in november so thank you clapping hands that was mm -hmm. awesome Thank you so much, Vera. That was super inspiring. I mean, I'm Thank you. so. I think your work is so cool. I, I really, I'm, I'm totally excited about it. Uh, Thank you. Right from the beginning. Yours too. By the, by the, sorry. Yours too. Oh, thanks, thanks. Mm -hmm. But I, you know, when we met on the uh, Dutch Design Week, I think it's yeah. already three years ago or something. I find it super, super cool what you just presented, and yeah, keep on. It's really, really cool work. And by the way, the chat is going crazy. People will love your work. They, uh, let thanks. me just read some of the comments here. So Stig says, Vera, I love the diversity and curiosity in your works. Also nice to see traces of traditional Dutch design tradition it evolve into new forms in computational media. Inspiring work. So wow. I mean, yeah, this is thanks. This is great. So um, yeah, Cyril wants to join the exhibition. So I get uh, yeah, totally please. excited. You're all invited. It's open for uh, a bit more than two weeks. So, um, yeah. Yeah. So great. And we'll definitely take a look at the Creative Coding Festival. And we'll yeah. If it's well, I, I will write you about this as well. 
but that's, great. That, that's for later. <laughs> Amazing, cool. So yeah. maybe maybe we have some questions for you. Let me just see. Uh, it's a little bit chaos in the chat right now. <laughs> um, so everyone, just post your questions. And there were some. Um, do, do, do. How does the knitter understand the processing code? How does a knitter understand the processing code? Uh, oh, the machine. Uh, yeah. So that's that's what the what the amazing people of IOP did. Uh, so they made a little piece of software uh, where you can basically uh, load in an image. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's it's not very live. You could program it live, but uh, you can basically work with black and white images. Um, mm -hmm. So what I do is that I use processing to create a, a black and white image, uh, which is a bit thresholded. Uh, so that it's just black and white pixels, not gray ones, and then I load it into this program, uh, and then yeah, how the pro like how the knitting machine itself works, I'm like too scared to open it up, so I can't really <laughs> tell you. There's like still a part that I don't understand, um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I, I, it's basically ones and zeros, and it pushes. There's like 200 needles. You have like a carriage that you put over it, and then mm -hmm. it pushes it to the next position, so either black or white. Mm -hmm. um, it comes down to that. Yeah, that's great. So what I would like to know, um, so you mentioned a lot processing and uh, P5JS. So what mm -hmm. would you say? What was the, I think processing was the first technology you've learned and then you started yeah. with P5JS because P5JS was probably not released yet, right? It wasn't. No, I remember there was like a way that you could export a processing sketch to some sort of a widget. Mm -hmm. So I think this was like processing 2.0, 2.3, mm -hmm. maybe something like that. Um, so I really started with processing. Um, I had a course, there was like a ISD course, so like basically a, a, a elective. Um, mm -hmm. And it's, it's totally clicked for me because I was doing these design things that took so much time. So I would like mm -hmm. hand color all these. I w work a lot with like grids and blocks. And I would yep. hand color all these, all these blocks and it would be like mm -hmm. 2,000 or 5,000 blocks mm -hmm. would take ages. And then if you do this with processing, it's basically like four lines of code and, mm -hmm. and you have the same, the same result. Absolutely. So I also really love to be in this ecosystem. I love the message of the Processing Foundation. I love how much the P5JS is pushing this diversity theme and all Yeah, these, that's super I mean, important. Absolutely, yeah. because we've got we don't have enough women and diverse people in in the community right so it's also yeah. a problem that i face when i when i'm building this thing so um yeah i think it's super important that we have more people from all genders all yeah. countries in this community right yeah and that's why i really like teaching because then uh, i feel it's easier to access like to basically uh, give people that have this different background some sort of a motivation or incentive to do this and uh, mm -hmm. yeah i just hope that then in the next 20 years this will continue and it will become much more diverse and much more equal which is maybe an ideological thing but yeah i really mm. i really do hope so yeah and i think you are really a, can be a v great idol for that because you've done so much amazing work right you can really be someone who inspires many people not just men and that's that's amazing I, I oh you too tim i mean uh, I think you your your courses are also have been very helpful and like every time I teach somewhere they're like I can I can tell and it's like ah you you followed the uh, tutorial by Tim didn't you and they're like yeah so <laughs> I think That's cool. and yeah. what I what I see is that we two you and me we both use very similar patterns I guess I mean you're also working a lot with grids right. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so that's what I see in your work. You mm -hmm. sometimes I have an idea of how you wrote a code. That's yeah, quite cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, like P graphics and yes. uh, noise and sine waves. Oh, I, I love don't... sine waves. Yeah, me too. But I mostly I don't use noise that much. Ah, oh, yeah, I do. I love noise. Maybe I should give it a, another try. But I always like to control things. For any reason. Oh yeah, then no, uh, I like to <laughs> not control things. I like to be surprised. I would love to make a workshop with your teaching uh, and uh, yeah, maybe on the Creative Coding Festival to see how you yeah. use noise in a work. That would be amazing. Yeah, you can do that. <laughs> cool. It's going to be really fun. Absolutely. So 
maybe there are some more questions vera what are the some of the biggest hurdles you had to take in learning creative coding is a question by david liebert um yeah so i think the beginning is the hardest because then mm. you don't really yield results yet and it's very frustrating and i think as you go along it becomes more self-explanatory and you kind of start to understand errors and mm -hmm. what was i think for me what helped me along like these kind of moments that i would be so stuck and i wouldn't know what to do which i think were like the biggest hurdles for me uh, was be in a community so basically have friends around me that were working um, with similar techniques that um, maybe they sometimes could help me out and i could help them out in other cases um so i would really say if you are beginning try to find like a community it can be offline it can be online that yeah. is kind of at the same level as you are mm. uh because then you can just share what you're working on and uh you can grow from each other so yeah i think that was like the the hardest in in coding coding terms mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, he, here's another good one. Uh, Cuban B says, Vera, do you need people to volunteer to help with your festival? I live close to Amsterdam and might love to help one way or another. Oh, that's so nice. So I mm. do want to I do want to pay everyone, but uh, please write me because uh, I can definitely use help with that. <laughs>